ASEAN Commemorative Summit kicks off in Korea's Busan. President Park Geun-hye calls for a further liberalization of their free trade agreement to open more business opportunities. South Korea's point man on inter-Korean relations calls for a dialogue with North Korea and closer coordination between Seoul and Washington. And the Bank of Korea makes a new policy move this month after two rate cuts this year but calls for structural reforms to break the low growth trend. Hello and welcome to the show, everyone. Coming to you live from Seoul, I am Kang Tae-ri. We begin tonight with the Korea ASEAN Commemorative Summit that kicked off in Korea's port city of Busan on this Thursday. The two-day event opened with the Korea ASEAN CEO Summit aimed at boosting economic cooperation. Our Hwang sung yi follows this report from Busan. Speaking before some 570 business leaders from Korea and ASEAN member countries, President Park Geun-hye called for further liberalization of the Korea-ASEAN free trade agreements to open up more business opportunities. She noted that the efficiency rate of Korea's FTA with its second largest trade partner is only half that of similar agreements with other countries due to a high number of restraints. Korea's trade volume with ASEAN jumped 16-fold from some 8 billion U.S. dollars in 1989 to 135 billion dollars last year, making ASEAN Korea's second largest trade partner. The region is also the number three investment destination for Korean businesses after the United States and China. President Park proposed diversifying their economic cooperation into the service sector beyond the energy and manufacturing sectors, showing a willingness to lift regulations if necessary. The Korea ASEAN CEO Summit was basically a venue for business leaders to network and open up new business opportunities that could ultimately help the two partners reach their target trade volume of 200 billion U.S. dollars by the year 2020. Hwang Sung-hee, Arirang News, Busan. And since giving that uh, keynote speech, uh, the president has been meeting with ASEAN leaders throughout the day. President Park Geun-hye thanked uh, Philippine President Benigno Aquino for coming to Korea despite the damage his country saw with a typhoon Hagu Pit and expressed her condolences for the lives lost. She also vowed to assist the Philippines with recovery efforts. Uh, president Aquino asked the Korean military contingent helping with rehabilitation of infrastructure there to extend its service. During talks with the Low Ocean Prime Minister, President Park Geun-hye pledged to expand development assistance to the country and customize Korea's Semaul Undong or modernization of rural communities to meet the needs of the Southeast Asian country. Now, the Korean host of bilateral diplomacy continued on this Thursday in a meeting with Myanmar President Tain Sein. She said she wanted to see the two countries' ties develop further ahead of their 40th anniversary of diplomatic relations next year. To expand bilateral trade and investments, President Park asked Myanmar to help Korean firms sort out problems related to securing electricity and land in the Southeast Asian country. The Myanmar 
leader in the meantime said he wants to see Korea's small and mid-sized firms make more investments in his country and also to show more support for Myanmar's agricultural development. And staying with the summit, of all the places the Korean wave has reached, it's inarguably enjoyed the most success in Southeast Asia. But uh, summit organizers have uh, turned the spotlight back to the other direction, highlighting the rich cultures of ASEAN member countries. Our Connie Kim reports from Busan. Leaders from Korea and ASEAN member nations are not only strengthening economic and diplomatic relations here in Busan, they're also focusing on the cultural ties that bind them. For Korea, that means promoting Hallyu or the Korean wave. The first places that washed ashore overseas were in ASEAN member countries. It's been a boon for Korea's tourism industry, with the number of tourists from ASEAN member countries on a steady rise over the past four years. Last year, the figure came to 1.5 million. On the sidelines of the Korea ASEAN Summit, Korea is returning the favor through the ASEAN Living Culture Festival, where the cultural jewels of Southeast Asia nations are on display. The statue of the Buddha is very different from Korea's. I only remember seeing these abroad. It's fascinating to see it in Busan. Participating performers from ASEAN member nations say the festival serves to promote their culture to Korea. We actually have been invited uh, to perform to this festival and we are representing Malaysia and we are doing the show. I hope that all the crowd uh, will be enjoying the performing. A special art exhibition is also being held at the Pusan Museum of Art and more than 100 pieces of art are on display to give visitors a better understanding of the region's histories and traditions. Korea's cultural ties with ASEAN are only expected to grow closer. And with plans to establish the ASEAN Culture House in 2017, Busan is now hoping to become the symbol city of strong cultural ties with ASEAN member nations. Connie Kim, Arirang News, Busan. South Korea's unification minister is in Washington meeting with senior officials in charge of North Korea policies there. He emphasized the importance of Seoul and Washington taking a fresh approach when tackling Pyongyang's nuclear program. Shin Semin has more. Speaking at a forum on Korean unification in the U.S. capital on Wednesday, Unification Minister Ryu Gilja said Seoul and Washington needed to work more closely together to engage with North Korea. To make the pressure more effective, dialogues and cooperation are also necessary. Our two countries should therefore strengthen our coordination for engagement as well. U.S. Assistant Secretary of State agreed and said the allies needed to make it clear to Pyongyang that its pursuit of nuclear weapons leads to a dead end. North Korea can never achieve the security and the prosperity that it desires while also pursuing nuclear weapons. Minister Ryu said South Korea and the U.S. needed to come up with creative and diverse approaches to resolve the North Korean nuclear issue and that it was important to make sure the North knows the benefits of cooperating with the outside world. He said that would ultimately open up more options for North Korea, boosting the quality of life for the North Korean people and demonstrating the regime was serious about improving its human rights problems. Most importantly, Ryu asked for international support, including from the U.S., for Seoul's drive for a peaceful unification, as it will provide growth momentum for the global economy at large. Shin Semin, Arirang News. Korea's central bank is keeping its key rate steady at 2 percent for now, and the top central banker called for structural reforms amid expectations of a rate cut to break a low growth trend and to brush off deflation concerns. Our Hwang Jie reports. The Bank of Korea decided on Thursday to stand pat on its 2 percent key interest rate that follows two previous rate cuts in the second half of this year, which came in line with government efforts to boost the ailing domestic economy. 
While market expectations are building for another rate cut early next year, the top central banker pointed to the need for structural reforms to pull the economy out of its low growth rut. Despite aggressive stimulus measures, the economy is not picking up, and that's because of the structural issues. Unless the economy goes through structural reforms, it won't break free from this low growth and low inflation. Further lowering the key rate would also stoke concerns about snowballing household debt, which already stands at roughly 950 billion U.S. dollars. The government's deregulation drive in the housing sector and a lower key interest rate worked in tandem to boost housing loans. Economic conditions outside of the country do not look all that bright either. Except for the U.S., advanced economies are suffering from sluggish growth. Emerging economies and China are also experiencing slowdowns. The Korea Development Institute has cut its growth outlook for next year to 3.5 percent, with many other institutions also downgrading their forecasts. The central bank governor also hinted about an upcoming downward revision in its growth forecast of 3.9 percent for next year, citing the sluggish eurozone and Chinese economies and weak sentiment at home. Hong Jie, Arirang News. Oil prices took another dive, dropping to five-year lows. This as OPEC projects lower demand for oil next year, and the U.S. reports a surprise increase in its inventories. Kim Minji has this report. OPEC has slashed its estimates for oil demand for 2015. It has lowered its projection to 28.9 million barrels a day, which is down about 300,000 from its previous forecast. The figure is the lowest in 12 years and down about 1 million barrels from what it's currently producing each day. With the cartel's official production target set at 30 million barrels a day, more oil will be produced than consumed next year. The downward revision reflects the upward adjustment of non-OPEC and U.S. shale supplies. OPEC says global oil demand is forecast to increase by 1.1 million barrels a day next year, but this will be offset by the estimated growth of 1.36 million in non-OPEC supply. Following the news, global oil prices tumbled to fresh five-year lows. West Texas Intermediate Oil finished 4.5 percent down at just under $61 per barrel on Wednesday on the New York Mercantile Exchange. This is the lowest level since July 2009. The benchmark Brent crude fell nearly 4 percent to $64.24. Crude oil prices have slumped by around 40 percent since June, and experts say it could fall further next year. Kim Minji, Arirang News. The rapid penetration of smartphones has given nearly every person in the country access to the Internet here in Korea. According to a joint survey conducted by the ICT ministry and the Korea Internet and Security Agency on some 25,000 households nationwide, 98.5 percent are able to get online. 84 percent of those households owned at least one smartphone, up from a 65 percent two years ago, and nearly 60 percent of them said they used their smartphones to shop online. The number of people using instant messaging has also jumped to nearly 90 percent, driven mainly by a surge of users in their 40s and 50s. When the internet interest rate is low like this, it's not easy to make gains with the bank deposits. So it's no surprise that the private investors scramble to apply for shares of Tail Industries, a de facto holding company of Samsung Group, which will make its debut on the stock market next week. But in the end, the biggest winners will be, of course, the heirs of the Samsung Group. Our Song Chisong reports. One out of 195. Those were basically the odds for picking up one of Tail Industries' 5.7 million shares made available to the public. A record high $30 billion were deposited before the subscription period closed on Thursday. As investors seeking profits rushed to make sure they didn't miss out on the chance, with interest rates hovering at record lows. The biggest IPO of 2014 was even more attractive with its listing price. Set at just under $50 per share. 
Many market watchers forecast that figure will easily surpass $100 soon after trading begins on the main board next Thursday. When you invest in and bid for a share seeking profit, you want the share price to jump to double its IPO price. I'm hoping that will happen in this case since Samsung's a big and stable company. The company has a diverse portfolio and there is internal demand from Samsung's subsidiaries. These factors have investors bullish about its mid and long term profit outlook. But the biggest beneficiaries will not be the individual investors. Samsung Group Chairman Lee Gunhee three children acquired a 40% stake in the company for just $8 million in 1996 through a controversial arrangement, which critics say ensure the controlling family maintain a firm grip on the conglomerate. Lee's heirs are also estimated to have evaded billions of dollars in inheritance taxes and stand to gain some $5 billion in cash if jail shares hit $100. Samsung's IPOs and restructuring measures this year are expected to help the chairman's three children gain better control over the conglomerate. The transfer of ownership from the Samsung chairman to his children became an urgent issue for the conglomerate this year, especially after Chairman Yi's heart attack in May. Song ji Sun, Arirang News. The photo-sharing application Instagram is now bigger than Twitter. The company says 300 million people use the application every month. That's more than Twitter, which had about 280 million active users as of October. Instagram also says there are 360,000 new users signing up every day, adding that 70 percent of its users come from outside the U.S. and users share 70 million photos, photos per day on average. Well, it may be losing out to Instagram, but uh, Twitter still has a strong presence here in Korea. And uh, Twitter Korea says the biggest story of 2014 for Korea was the April ferry disaster. The company says the Seoul Ho ferry tragedy was the event most tweeted about, with many messages and expressing thoughts and prayers for the victims and their families. Next on the list was a Korean figure skater Kim Yeonha's final performance in February at the Winter Olympics in Sochi, where she ended up winning silver. That was followed by events including local elections here in, in June and Pope Francis' trip to Korea in August. Globally, the most tweeted event of the year was a World Cup semi-final match in July between Germany and Brazil. Authorities in Hong Kong have begun clearing out to the main pro-democracy protest site in the heart of the city's financial center. With more, we are joined by Paul Lee from the news center. Paul, this looks like to uh, looks to mark the end of this long-running demonstrations that at times paralyze the Chinese-controlled territory. That's right. It's been more than two months since the pro-democracy movement erupted in Hong Kong, drawing over 100,000 supporters to the streets at its peak. However, those still remaining are now clinging onto one of the last strongholds of that campaign. City workers have been slowly taking down barricades and removing tents since early Thursday. This as some 7,000 police officers were due to be deployed to ensure the court order clearance was carried out. Though they've met relatively little resistance so far, some arrests have reportedly been made. Police demanded protesters immediately vacate the occupied area, but some student leaders and even lawmakers have vowed to stand firm. This is part of the struggle, the civil disobedience uh, for democracy. And now the occupation has taken more than 70 days and now the police are coming to clear the umbrella square so we of course have to come and show ourselves and if they want to arrest us they can arrest us 
The clearance at Admiralty comes more than two weeks after authorities cleared the protest site in the Mongkok district, sparking several nights of violent clashes between demonstrators and police. Mm. And turning to uh, Europe now, Paul, the United Nations a Human Rights Agency has called for the prosecution of uh, U.S. officials involved in the brutal interrogation techniques used by the CIA. This comes a day after the release of a uh, U.S. Senate report that revealed the extent of the Asian these extreme methods. Right, and this latest announcement from the UN also falls on International Human Rights Day. This as a wave of international criticism is mounting against the American intelligence agency while it operated under the Bush administration. The UN Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights said Wednesday that the next step would be to bring those responsible to trial for what it described as undeniable acts of torture. The UNHCR added that criminal charges needed to be brought against officials who carried out, ordered and devised the harsh detention policies. It's absolutely crystal clear. Torture is prohibited absolutely in all circumstances at any time. It cannot be practiced in war, in peace, during emergencies, during internal instability, any circumstances whatsoever. And the corollary of that is people who do practice it uh, should be brought to trial. According to the U.S. Senate report, the CIA misled the White House and the American public about its torture of detainees after the September 11th attacks. The U.S. Justice Department has said it will not pursue charges, saying there was not enough evidence to prosecute individuals. And uh, shifting to the Ukraine crisis, uh, Kiev says it has officially dropped its uh, neutral status in global affairs, paving the way for the country's membership in NATO. This marks another sign of the geopolitical shift in, in this region. How important is this declaration? Well, it's a move that Russia has vehemently opposed and shows the ever-growing divide between Kiev and Moscow. This as Ukraine's security forces continue to clash with pro-Russian rebels in the east of the country. The Ukrainian government formally announced on Wednesday that it would change its non-alignment status, repealing a law that was enacted in 2010. Despite the move, Kiev's head of the Secretariat of Security Cooperation said it was still a long way before Ukraine could become a NATO member. It's impossible for Ukraine to join NATO today. In the first place, we need to lay the legal groundwork for gaining NATO membership. Later, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko urged Russia to withdraw its troops from his country and close the eastern border. He said doing so would create peace in the war-torn region within a matter of weeks. And uh, finally, Paul, uh, Time magazine has named its uh, 2014 Person of the Year, but it looks like instead of just honoring a single individual, uh, Time has decided to highlight the ongoing struggle against the, one of the worst uh, health crises that the world is facing. That's right. The American News Weekly on Wednesday chose to honor the hundreds of people who have risked their lives to fight Ebola in West Africa, the deadliest outbreak of its kind on record. Time applauded the work of four medical personnel, local hospital staff, ambulance drivers, and even burial teams. The magazine said it was their tireless acts of courage and mercy that helped buy the world time to boost its defenses against the deadly virus. This year, the time person of the year are the Ebola caregivers. Um, we really came to that decision because this is a major health crisis that struck not just West Africa, but really was a threat to the entire world, and it was something that in the summer and even the early fall was really in danger of becoming completely out of control and was really only sort of slowed down by the bravery of doctors, of nurses. The latest tally by the World Health Organization showed nearly 18,000 reported cases of Ebola, mostly in Sierra Leone, Liberia and Guinea. This as the current fatality rate is estimated to be about 70 percent of all cases. Charity? All right, Paula, thank you so much for those uh, stories. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you back here in just about two hours. Good evening and welcome. I'm Kim Bo-kyung with your weather updates. 
At the moment, strong winds are blowing nationwide under partly cloudy skies, making it feel much colder than the actual numbers. Now, plus, we've got more snow forecast starting along the west coast, where regions could get over 15 centimeters, while us here in Seoul are looking at about a centimeter. Along with the snow and showers, strong cold winds will sweep the nation on Friday, so make sure to gear up for the cold. And for those of you making plans for the weekend, keep in mind that snow Snowy conditions will stick around, especially in regions on the west coast. On to Friday's readings. Seoul starts off the day at minus 6 degrees with a high of 2, while Busan hits 7. On to other regions. Daejeon reaches 0, Dokdo hits 5, Mount Kumgang drops to minus 9. Those are the updates I have for you now. Here's a look at the international weather. And that will do it for this edition of Idea News at 8. Thanks for watching.